Hey guys, it's Avi from Koi here, and uh, this is how Koi will empower developers to create decentralized media apps. So for those of you who don't know, Koi is the ecosystem for DPIN projects. Uh, we have 90,000 nodes on our network. Each node supplies the network with uh, resources, compute resources, such as uh, data resources, um, processing power, uh, networking resources, uh, etc. Apps also integrate really well with existing Web2 frameworks and libraries. Um, so launching your new altcoin and altcoin projects has never really been easier uh, than Koi. So Koi is the actual token. It's the currency of our ecosystem. It's what uh, basically is uh, used for transaction fees, the gas fees. Um, and it's also used for interacting with the blockchain. Of course, you can also use the Koi program library, the KPL, to create your own tokens as well and altcoins for your own projects. Here's a little overview of what the uh, Koi ecosystem looks like. The reason I'm bringing this up is just so that you get a good idea of what you're getting into and what we're going to be talking about as an underlying framework uh, for, uh, for this little tutorial. So when we talk about building uh, media apps on Koi, what are we talking about? We're talking about games, streaming, so for media, news, journalism, podcast, audiobooks, ebooks, blogs. Um, and one of the benefits of Koi is that you'll be able to allow your users to interact with your apps using your token or your altcoin. Um, so, for example, paying for subscriptions, um, but in the context of games, maybe you want to have a premium currency, maybe you want to have a betting staking mechanism, um, we'll support all that um, primarily through our wallet called Finny. A little bit more about the media uh, library initiative. We have a massive decentralized compute network, um, which basically enables the scalable development of microservices, decentralized hosting of server tools, uh, decentralized hosting and server tools, um, but also a lot more. Um, some of the things that we're going to try and enable people to do is integrating um, existing frameworks, tools, apps um, with, uh, with with Toy. So examples are Unreal, uh, Engine, Unity, Twitch, Spotify, Substack, uh, basically any any common uh, sort of API that you want you'd want to integrate into an app or somehow utilize uh, or develop with, uh, whether it's an engine. Um, or whether it's more like an API you're just calling, um, we'll integrate it into Koi, and it'll be really easy. Um, some benefits of, of using the Koi Media Library will be a decentralized infrastructure, um, smart contracts for media management, scalable storage solutions, token-based incentives, APIs, SDKs. Um, and one of the big ones is community governance as well. And the whole project, of course, will be open source and available for you guys to look at and dive deep into. So we're going to try and uh, show you how to get started building a very simple game that might look like this. Uh, we call it Koi Tac Toe, a uh, very simple back and forth client uh, server architecture. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll get a little bit into uh, how to set that up. So to start off, we're going to go to koi.network slash doc slash develop slash task development slash write a task. Uh, I'll show you how to get there, though. So you don't have to go from scratch. We'll go to the Koi docs, right? And then we're going to go to develop and we want to go to task develop slash write a task. Task development slash write a task. Boom. And it takes us right there. Then we're going to want to find this task template and we'll just click it and it'll take us to the latest version. Uh, to clone it, we're just going to click this green code button, and then we're going to click copy this URL. Uh, next, we're going to go into VS Code. Great. So now that you're with us, what we're going to want to do is type in git clone, and then we're going to want to paste in that link. And that's going to clone the repo. And you'll have it right here. Now, I've already cloned it and prepared a little exemplar for you. Uh, but what you'll be doing is you'll be using this new task template to set up most of what I did here. So the first file that you're going to want to concern yourself with is the index.js file. And this is where you're going to start putting in all of your server logic. This is where the node lives as well. Uh, so what we're going to do here, or this is where the node communicates, sorry. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Uh, so right here is where we can put in a little bit of server logic, like setting up different variables, like whether player 1's connected, player 2's connected, whether the lobby's ready. 
we'll have this if app statement that's pretty generic across all like you'll have that when the when you get the task template and you're just going to start uh, overloading it with uh, or sorry loading it with endpoints here so here's an example endpoint is join game uh, player two will equal true if they join game maybe we're just assuming that if you join the game uh, your player two if you create the game your player one in this context we'll say if player one is is in the lobby maybe um, somehow something happened where player two snuck in and player one got out and something desynced a little uh, we will skip this but otherwise we'll say lobby red equals true and we'll send back data someone send a game and maybe we'll even want to add actually instead send something like uh, lobby ready is it true or false so that's a little bit of easy server logic, and you can easily wrap your head around this. If you want to add something like rooms and stuff, you can basically make endpoints, uh, like longer endpoints. So something like this. Where you'd have a, your path, you know, your path to the base game. And then, uh, you would then have another path to lobby, something like that. So once you've gotten a good bit of server logic here, like creating lobbies, joining games, uh, managing, managing all of that logic, you're probably gonna wanna be able to serve a client as well. So make another folder and call it the game folder. And in here, we'll have game client server utils and uh, a game output.json. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, server utils is usually pretty straightforward. It's just uh, you don't necessarily want to make this index.js file too busy. Uh, so, it's just nice, or maybe you'll want to reuse functions and stuff. It's just nice to make your own server utils. So, we have a simple example of an export function which might check a win. It's looking for current player winning combinations in the board. This is from a tic-tac-toe game. Uh, and it'll do some basic logic just to see if there's a winner or if, the you know, it'll look at the board and see if there's a winner. And uh, that's just a nice server utility that you might want to import. So this is a really good place to put that. Uh, the next thing would be the game client. So this is actually what you want to serve um, to a user. So you can use Express to serve um, an HTML page um, that has this script running in it, and um, you'll be good to go. Uh, it'll, it'll serve this page, and the client will be able to click buttons on the page that it served to hit back against those endpoints that you set up. So an example would be something like this. You have a current player, client player, and uh, just a bool to uh, pull the lobby, or to, I guess to stop pulling the lobby in this case. So on the client side, you might have a button that asks to join the game. And so what it'll do is it'll console log trying to join the game. It'll say um, the client player is currently the second player in the array. It'll be zero. Remember the zero one. So one is actually player two. And we're saying if we join the game, we're forcing ourselves to be player two. Uh, then we have an await. Remember, that's really important to, to put our awaits in our asyncs. Uh, fetch join game. Remember that we could... Uh, make sure that we have a path and a lobby here, and we can pass that uh, in to the client uh, when it attempts to join the game or uh, or uh, create the lobby. Uh, then we're just, you know, uh, parsing the response as JSON, and we're console.logging in this case. Uh, the main thing here is that we're going to start pulling the server for lobby updates. Now, you might want to have some logic here to just make sure that everybody connected in nicely, but I just wanted to make this as concise as possible so that everything fit onto one screen. Uh, I wanted to add an example of polling to the server because I know that this isn't something that other tutorials might go over. Um, so polling the lobby for updates is really simple. Uh, first off, we're checking if our bool is true or false. Um, and if it's... Uh, false because if it's true we're going to stop so if it's false we're going to keep going um we're going to jump in here and then we're going to have a try uh where we're going to try and get the game state right and uh if the lobby is ready we're going to call 
uh, another function that would be called lobby ready. Otherwise, uh, we're going to say an error. Maybe we couldn't find the server. Maybe it's something else. Um, and then we're going to use the set timeout function. Uh, the set timeout function will let us have these scheduled executions of one time callbacks after a delay in milliseconds. Uh, so an example here and in tic-tac-toe that we use is pull server for lobby updates every uh, 100 milliseconds. And this is happening on the client, this, uh, this polling update. So usually it's not too much of a concern how often the client uh, updates or refreshes. Uh, it's more of a concern how often you're hitting the server. So you want to make sure that you disconnect those two things, that your game client might be updating at a different uh, period um, that it's pulling the server, especially depending on the speed of your games. Note that we can't handle fast games in this kind of architecture. Uh, we're currently working on socket architecture to handle those kind of things. But for now, uh, we're limited to this HTTPS uh, but sort of uh, calling uh, sort of architecture. Um, so something you're going to need to worry about when you're making stuff with Koi is an output object, especially in the context of a game. Now this is a really simple example uh, submission object. You're probably going to want to have you're you're probably going to have something that's a, a lot larger, especially depending on what your game looks like. But in the context of tic tac toe, here's a really simple type of game output, and I'll explain why you need it later. But let's just say that while the game's going, it's recording uh, what player played the uh, a move, and it's a hash that's signed with their key, which is from their wallet, their Finny wallet, and then the move they made. And then uh, the same thing for player two and the move they made. Then the go back to player one and another move they made. Then player two and another move they made. So this will just be a store of the game. The idea is that eventually when you're looking to audit other nodes, when you're looking to make sure that other nodes did good work while they're looking at your work, um, that they'll have something to look to 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 check that everything is basically above board. Uh, right. So then it's about actually doing something with that submission uh, object. So right here we have an example function, uh, fetch JSON data, which is just uh, you put in a path, it fetches a path, path, <laughs> uh, and then. Um, it does some logic on that. It's very simple, just fetching the JSON data. And then uh, down here, we have an example submission object, uh, which is just, it's a const value equals fetch JSON data. And we're fetching it from this uh, path, which is uh, the game, uh, game output JSON. And then really, I mean, from here, it's fairly straightforward. Just follow the value. Um, variable through the rest of the flow and you you all you have to do is uh what you would do with any other task a basic uh submission distribution audit now if you don't know what i mean by what you would do with any other task then i suggest you check out our easy sandbox tutorial we go over all of the basics about the concepts of what this looks like a few workshops on how to actually do it and then when you come back to here you'll know exactly where to pick up from uh where we left off all right, well, I hope that you guys feel a little empowered to start maybe building a game, seeing how uh, really easy it is to get going, especially if you've done something like this before. Um, it's really good fun to make games on Koi, and we hope to support you further and uh, create more robust tutorials. All right, thanks so much. Cheers.